Republicans are doing good things again. So uh, praise praise be to them. Mashallah. So uh, uh, Republicans are defunding Woca-Cola. So if you go to the first link here, this is just a compilation I found. So you can see Coca-Cola HQ there. With, uh, I presume this is, is meant to be some symbol for pride. If it's not, then I guess they just have it as a placeholder now for the first one. And then you can see Coca-Cola Euro-Pacific Partners with the uh, pride logo there. Coca-Cola Iberia, pride logo. Coca-Cola Middle East, nah. Funny that, nah, isn't thanks. it? Hmm. You'll notice how these are the, the like uh, 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 regional groups as well. The individual like UK and whatnot aren't doing it, but the regional Coca-Cola accounts are all doing it, and the Middle Eastern one has been like, not today. So that's something to keep in mind as we go forwards. Love how that works. So if we go to the next one, it's just just things where Coca-Cola stand on. I mean, why uh, not my smart water before someone else bugs me? So Coca-Cola here saying where we stand on social justice. Together we must. Companies like ours must speak up as allies to the Black Lives Matter movement. Bunch of communists. We stand with those seeking justice and equality. A communist value. Equality. Not a liberal one. A liberal one would be freedom. Today, we are announcing $2.5 million in grants from the Coca-Cola Foundation for the Equal Justice Initiative to assist advocates and policymakers in critically important work of criminal justice reform. So we're going to give $2.5 million to a bunch of Marxists. And also, we stand with Black Lives Matter. So it says Coca-Cola. I guess not that's Black Lives Matter, Middle East, though. I'm oh. sure that's what everyone wants to hear from their favourite brand of sugar water. It's yeah. Like, Great. Pathetic. And this isn't the, the only stupid blog post they've done. They've done loads of stuff. So we're going to go through it because I want to really throw them under the bus here. So we go to the next one. This is uh, recognizing our duty to strive together for racial equity. And uh, it's, it's ridiculous. So they want to recognize their duty for greater racial equity within our communities. Race socialism. Thank God, Coke. I mean, I'm sure the, the old Nazi uh, detachment you had would actually agree with you on that one. They want racial equity, but for the German race. And your one is like, yeah, we want racial equity for the black race of America. They're yeah. carrying on the mantle of their company. What can you say? Part of the founding principles. The company and some <laughs> of our brands are using our voice to reach uh, reach and take a stand. I also love it on this because you, you think during World War II, Coca-Cola was a symbol of American individualism, freedom, so on and so forth. Uh, and now they're, they're just race socialists. Great. Like you, I mean, how long did it take? 60 years? And then they, they, they literally took the German position on things. In Volkan Reich. Anyway. I mean, it's, it's obviously just part of a PR campaign, right? Because no, no, no. This is real. And I'm going to prove it to you. The people okay. at the top are not just running along with it because they think you can make some cash. They, they are true believers in this crap. The series was an extension of the Together We Must pledge. $500,000 have been donated to 100 Black Men of America Incorporated. Don't know what that is, but I mean, that sounds like woke ink if you ever asked for it. Black Men of America, ink. <laughs> like, <laughs> white Men of America, ink. <laughs> oh boy donating one million dollars to the wck to fight food insecurity around the world that could be something to do i mean if you want to help people who are going to die from famine that's but, uh, probably better spent than but it doesn't end there 100 black men of america or whatever it was and support communities of color that have been disproportionately affected by covid19 there's the race socialism Never, never just goes for let's do good things. Let's, let's do good things, but only for certain racial groups. The brand also donated $500,000 to the Black Lives Matter Global Network to support the groups of voting education efforts and not buy houses for its leaders. But uh, I guess that's where the money went, didn't it? I'm sure so, Patrice Cullors is very grateful for her fourth home. Thanks to that house. Coca-Cola. <laughs> she, uh, she should do an advert <laughs> for them. I mean, why not? They paid for it. So if you go to the next link as well, this is just them posting on their, their Facebook account here. They say, we are pausing advertising on all social media for 30 days. Oh, noble and brave. During this time, we will reassess platforms and practices to drive accountability towards a safer, hate-free env hate environment. You do spread a lot of hate, Coca-Cola. So, I mean, if you logging off for 30 days ends the hates, as you're saying. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, okay. At least that's an admittance of where it's coming from. Good. As you can see, like the top comment there, goodbye. <laughs> Coke, you have lost another customer thanks to your wokeness. I was just reading that, actually. <laughs> well done, Todd. Good guy. Uh, I love how he's the highest comment there. <laughs> That's great. Which is like, yeah, there's too much racism online, so Coca-Cola's logging off. Okay. <laughs> okay, then. And uh, this isn't coming from nowhere. I mean, Coca-Cola, as people know, if we go to the next one, told white people to be less white. Their own employees. So this is Carolyn Borisenko posting here, breaking Coca-Cola is trying to force employees to complete online trailing. A training telling them to be less white these images are from an internal whistleblower and as you can see this is uh god what's it robin d'angelo the 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 race nationalist her training remember white fragility is her book that everyone's being forced to buy if you're a wokest 
So to be less white is to be less oppressive, to be less arrogant, to be less certain, to be less defensive, ignorant, humble, to listen, to believe, to break with apathy, break with white solidarity. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Most people don't think of being white like that. They think of it just being skin tone. That's it. But uh, if you ask the white nationalists, I guess, thanks Robin D'Angelo for the white nationalist perspective. I mean, she holds it sincerely. If you go to the, the last one here, which is just the, the slide that she's referring to, of Robin D'Angelo telling you to be less white. Go out in the sun. Get a tan. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's Coca-Cola to their own employees here. It's, uh, that's, that, yeah, that's them. So this is a LinkedIn Learning lecture series as well. What was interesting is LinkedIn Learning deleted this series after it went viral that Coca-Cola were enforcing this racist nonsense upon their staff. Isn't that interesting? LinkedIn Learning thinks that this is racist. So they got rid of it. Surely it was just because it was giving them bad PR, because I've heard other stuff about LinkedIn being a bit yeah, questionable. why would it give them bad PR? Well, because it is racist. Yeah. Nice admittance there. Robin D'Angelo, racist, so says LinkedIn Learning. Coke also first denied that this was being sent to staff, uh, and then confirmed that yes, it is, after, you know, Carol and whatnot were like, we have internal leakers. Like, they're taking screenshots of your internal stuff. What, you, you think you're going to... This is all fake or something? I don't, like, like, if members of your organization are leaking stuff, you, you can't deny that it's there. That's not going to work. Anyway. Coca-Cola's saying it's a conspiracy against them. Everyone's just trying to trip them up. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, it, it, never mind the fact that it fits in entirely with your previous actions and further actions. So this is something where I'm going to prove to you that it's not just a, a fad or something. So glad here. Um, so this is an organization of less of nonsense. Tonight on 60 Minutes, uh, some woman shared a, a shameful story of fear-mongering about trans youth. Parents of trans youth could walk away from that story with a false belief that young people are being rushed into medical transition. This is simply untrue. Rubbish. Liar. I did liar. Like, how many more cases? I mean, in the UK alone, I don't know too much about the American situation in which yeah. we have organisations that have been, you know, thrown in front of high courts and deemed to yeah, have the, been doing the wrong the thing. the Tavistock Clinic, it was, what, f three hour-long consultations before you get put on puberty blockers as a child. That's before too, too long. It was ruled against. It should be one hour. I'm so, so, so glad. <laughs> so yeah, there's this organisation. I mean, just obvious garbage. But uh, guess guess who's a, di a director of GLAD? Yeah, it'd be the president of Coca-Cola on the Western Perth, isn't it? So this lady here. So it gets worse. GLAD partnerships with companies that donated to legislatures, advancing anti-trans youth bills. Coca-Cola, for instance, donated to the Arkansas legislature that banned trans youth healthcare. And who's on the head of GLAD's uh, board of directors? And as you can click on the first image there. This is GLAD board of directors, Pamela Stewart publicly available information this isn't new and if you go to the next image you can see uh yeah there's pamela stewart president western operations north america operating unit at coca-cola company and also chair and board of directors at glad these are the people running it people at the top are wokists they honestly believe this garbage and uh it's not just let's just put up the logo like some companies have been Volkswagen. <laughs> so <laughs> i'm just amazed that they can actually run a company without running it into the ground already like yeah, well, I mean, uh, this is where it is getting run into the ground. Because all of this stuff doesn't come at no cost, and it shouldn't come at no cost. Because this is unbelievably racist. It, it is unacceptable for an organization to tell you to be less white. To stop white people. White people are the problem. If an organization is telling you that, don't give me money. Why would you give me money? Why would you fund your enemies? Anyway, so we go to the next link here. This is uh, them becoming openly partisan beyond what, what they already were, which is uh, Coca-Cola CEO saying that Georgia's new voting law was unacceptable. It's a step backwards. And this legislation is wrong and needs to be remedied. We will continue to advocate for it, both private and in public. He looks absolutely play. thrilled there. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and always got a little pride Coca-Cola behind him as well. It's all stage managers. I've it? never seen someone look as miserable as that before <laughs> in my entire life. So, yeah, Georgia passed some voting legislation to make their voting system safer for democracy and in response uh the wokeists and the democrats were like yeah you can't do this what what about mer censored because we can't say what they're arguing for can we on youtube oh yeah of course so they they demanded uh more of that and uh the republicans were like nah so the companies like coca-cola who are not just there for a fad they, they are sincere believers are advocating against it and uh so what have the republicans done defunded it because why wouldn't you I mean, they're literally going to fund your opposition. Don't work with them. So we go to the next one here. So this is Breitbart reporting. North Carolina County officials ban Coca-Cola machines due to left-wing politics. I mean, if you can hit them anywhere, and especially if you're in a position of power to do it, I mean, the, the, the commissioners at Car uh, Carolina, Carolina here being in a perfect position to do it, because they have Coca-Cola machines in all the government buildings. So the, the guy in charge was like, 
You don't really have to have you here. This is a privilege. I don't have to have your machines. I can have anyone else's machines. I can have no machines. I tell people just get their own drinks, damn it. You know, or we could just set up some water fountains or something and everyone could be healthier, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best alternative, really. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, hats off to this chap. He's done a, he's done a good job here, which is like, right, if you're going to keep funding the opposition party, if you're going to keep being openly race socialists for, against white people, incidentally, I mean, I, you know, I don't care if you were against black people, white people, whatever, it's still disgusting that you would do this. Um, we don't, we're not going to take the money away from you. We don't have to have your machines. We're not going to pay you a cent, especially if taxpayers' money here because it's government buildings. So if we go to the next clip, this is the commissioner explaining why he's banned Coke. The county commissioner leading this Coke boycott says he hopes it spreads across North Carolina. He says it's time that someone spoke out against left-wing politics. The left wing in America, they, uh, they defund, they boycott, uh, they cancel, uh, they tear down statues, all sorts of egregious actions. And, uh, and the expectation from them is that uh, the, the opposing political side uh, will cower in the corner. And uh, we're supposed to accept that, and it's supposed to be okay. And, and it's not okay. In a 3-2 vote, county commissioners adopt a resolution banning Coke machines from any of its buildings. So I think it was like Quincy or something, but hats off to your chap. Good thing. He also advocates that we need to spread this across the United States, like all the Republicans in a position of power within their states. Why have Coke machines at your offices? Why have them anywhere near the government? I mean, they, you don't have to be there. They have no right to be there. It's a privilege to be able to get that kind of access. I mean, quite frankly, uh, fundamentally, you shouldn't be giving out stuff like that. Because, I mean, why Coca-Cola? Why not Pepsi? It's uh, it's obviously biased in favor of one company over another using taxpayers' money, which you shouldn't be doing. But uh, they don't deserve any special treatment by the state. And uh, any Republicans, I guess, in the United States, if you want to contact your, your local commissioners or legislations and be like, hey, this guy's done this. It's probably a good idea, considering they're funding the enemy. So probably we should do the same. Because why not? I mean, he makes a great point there, which is if the, if the left are going to engage in boycotts and so on and so forth and do all this stuff, and the right wing doesn't, well then, if you were, I mean, Coca-Cola honestly believes, but if you were not an honest believer, you would think, screw it, I'll just side with the left, and then no pain to me. There, there has to be comeback. If you are going to side with race nationalism, you know, the Democratic Party, there has to be comeuppance for that action, because it's evil. And uh, to be able to just say, we're not going to give you government money, or we're going to boycott you, perfectly reasonable. Yep, really it's the best it. way to get their attention as well. If you're damaging their profit margins, then they're going to take notice no matter what you're saying. Well, in the case of Coca-Cola, I don't believe they will. I think they're happy to lose the money, but that's good. They deserve to lose the money. And the mantra should continue to be true. Go woke, go broke. And if you can make them go broke, that'll be their comeuppance. Like if you can, it's not just about them taking notice. I want them to not take notice and drive themselves into the ground if they're going to continue with the garbage. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.